In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's so very easy today to fall into that trap to judge others, and even more than just judge, condemn others, condemn them to hell for what they are doing or not doing, judging them for what they say, judging them for how they think. Yes, we've often appointed ourselves the morality police. We appoint ourselves the chief judge of the world instead of God. We fail to go to others directly, showing them compassionate love and concern, often failing to see our own failures before we see others. So God's Word says that it has to stop. It's wrong. It's sinful. Repentance is then the starting point for having mercy and compassion on others, giving them what they ultimately don't really deserve. So as we are led by faith by the Holy Spirit, we are led to think more like our Heavenly Father instead of like the father of lies, the devil. We are led to think and act with mercy instead of judgment. Yes, with loving kindness instead of condemnation. We are led to be and act like Joseph in our Old Testament lesson for today. To act like Joseph to our family members, to those who have offended us, to those who have betrayed us, to those who have hated us and wanted us dead. It's Joseph should have, according to the world's standards, hated his brothers for leaving him in that pit to die. Yes, Joseph should have gotten payback, right? According to the world's standards, that's how he should have reacted for all the evil that his brothers did in rage and jealousy against him. But no, Joseph didn't do that. He acted in mercy and compassion gave to his brothers what they didn't deserve. Joseph recognized that it was not his place to judge them. He said, do not fear, for am I in the place of God? Clearly the answer is no, right? He is not God. Dear friends, you are not God. Joseph recognized that judgment and condemnation are to be left to God to carry out. For the Lord says in our epistle lesson, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. He did not appoint you as judge. So Joseph is an example to all of us of a type of Christ in the Old Testament. Yes, showing the mercy and compassion of his heavenly Father. A man who showed mercy and compassion to his brothers when when they were unlovable, when they did not deserve his mercy. Sending his Son, God sending his Son to redeem people like you and me who were unlovable. He says, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. We often think to ourselves, how can any good ever come out of evil? Right there in Scripture, we see it so clearly, don't we? With Joseph and his brothers. No matter who we might think is our enemy, Our greatest enemy, though, is not any person of human flesh and blood. It is not anyone in our neighborhood, in our community, even in our church. It is the devil. 
He is our enemy. He is the one that we are in spiritual battle with. He is the one then to be judged. Not our neighbor. Not our co-worker. Not our ex. Ex Ex-wife or ex-husband. Not our boss. The devil. And him only. You're called as baptized children of God to view everyone, everyone in our lives with mercy and compassion. Yes, where other people meant evil against us in our lives, we are to see what good will come through that evil. Well, it's an easy job to play the armchair quarterback, isn't it? We all like to do it. We all like to tell people how it should have been done. To think that we are the experts, to think that that we are the know-it-alls, elevating ourselves to the level of God in judging others. It's easy to play the quality control inspector, to pick out the little nitpicky problems in, in other people's lives, to sweat the small stuff, to be overly critical. Yes, at little microscopic slivers of wood in our neighbor's eyes that fail to see that we have these giant beams of wood protruding out of our own eyes. Yes, we too play the hypocrite instead of the confessing sinner failing to recognize that that we have no right to judge others when, when we are then, as the Apostle Paul says, the worst of sinners. Your neighbor, your brother or sister in Christ, whoever it may be, they have real sins in their lives that they have committed. And they are in need of your compassion and mercy. Because the way that you look at them and their lives matters. You're not to act snobby or snobbish or or too good for them or outright condemn them. You'll fail then at leading them to repentance and faith if you do so. You'll fail to be Christ to that person, to show the mercy of God the Father, who so graciously shows his mercy to you. By nature, we too, we were once completely blind. And when we couldn't do the surgery to free ourselves from our blindness, when we couldn't pull those large, pieces of wood out of our eyes. God in his mercy did. He opened our eyes. He showed us the mirror of the law so that we would look at ourselves instead of others. Yes, we look to our own faults, our own foibles, our own failures instead of others. By repentance and faith, then we are led to to have more compassion and more mercy for others as our Heavenly Father does for us. Brother, a pastor of mine, uh, brother pastor of mine uh, couldn't have said it better than this when he talks about the log in our own eye. Such beautiful gospel. He said that when you couldn't pull the log out yourself, Jesus pulled the log out of your eye, and he then hoists that log upon his shoulders. You see the imagery? Carrying that log upon his shoulders, bearing your burden, bearing your sin upon himself. He doesn't use that log then to to start beating you over the head with it, He doesn't use it to try to shape you up, become a better Christian. No, he carries it upon himself. He carries it to Calvary. He puts it in the ground. He's put upon it. He is pierced upon that log, that cross for you. 
ultimately to free you from your blindness. A beautiful gospel. Compassionate love and mercy shown to you. That is the abundant mercy and compassion that the Father has shown to you by sending his Son to do that work for you. The holy life of the Christian then is confessing our unworthiness, confessing the mercy and compassion of God the Father and his Son with our neighbor with our neighbor who is still clearly blind and needs our help. Showing our neighbor the ways which God gives us his mercy today through the means of grace. The means of grace that are always offered here at Christ Lutheran Church. The word, the sacrament, absolution, abundant mercy. Where God's cup then overflows to each and every one of us. Abundant, without measure, week in and week out. Yes, God continues to pour out his mercy upon us sinners, overflowing it into our lap. Jesus actually gives us a good illustration to help us understand this better the end of our gospel there. Actually, it's kind of in the middle, isn't it? It's to talk about this understanding of how his mercy flows out into our lap. He, he uses the illustration of, of a commercial, uh, the commercial world of agriculture. How a merchant deals then with grain to his customer. Probably don't see it work like this today, though, do we? Helping us then in this example to see the picture of our Heavenly Father and His generosity. His generosity poured out upon blind, log eye infested, infected, judgmental, unforgiving, and selfish people. Yes, the Father allows His generous mercy to overflow upon us. Just as this merchant pours the grain into a measuring cup or bucket presses it down, then makes sure that every nook and cranny of it is filled in with grain so he is not to short us. Then he fills it to the brim and then allows it to continue to overflow, not shorting us of that grain, not shorting us of his mercy, allowing it to overflow, overflowing into our laps. And back in those days, the the customer had actually the bucket kind of attached around his waist, so it was actually in his lap, and he would have that then filled up so that he could then walk home with it. If you can kind of get that picture. Yes, this is what abundant mercy is all about. Having that cup filled to the brim and then overflowing. Yes, your bucket runs over, dear friends. It runs over with God's mercy. It overflows with the mercy of your Heavenly Father. You receive this great generosity from the Father then only because of His dear Son. The excess, the extra forgiveness spills out into your laps this day and it flows out then to your neighbor spilling over goodness. Nothing better than that. As we hear from the psalmist, abounding in steadfast love and mercy that endures forever. Your Heavenly Father has enough love. He has enough mercy and grace for all people, even the worst of sinners. So, dear friends, continue to show that mercy and compassion to others, even those who hate you. So, dear friends in Christ, by His grace, you are merciful. By His grace, you are merciful even as your Father is merciful because you have received God's generous mercy and compassion that runs over for you in your Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless all of you then for Jesus' sake as you continue to show compassion and mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.